Hey, everybody. Welcome to Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. I'm Derek Mazzoni, your host. Thank you for being here. Hope wherever you are in the world, it's okay. And if it's not, it gets better. And I hope you're enjoying every single day that you can. We are fully in 2022 right now. We've been doing a weekly session with some fabulous artists from all over the world, continuing with our effort to celebrate diversity and champion shared humanity literally throughout the world. We're going to make a stop right now to Toronto, Canada. Um, dare I say, Canada's most diverse city. Um, I love the town. Uh, not in winter, but I love the town in general. It is uh, has a really intense music scene, and it's the hub for Canada, so there's so much uh, going on there. Um, and often when you have so much diversity, you have some really interesting music that comes out of that as musicians from all over the world get together, create some new sounds. And um, because it's Canada, there's a support system for these artists. There's clubs, there's venues, there's even some support coming in from uh, from the provinces and the cities and the government itself. So it's a vibrant scene. Uh, the band we're going to be talking today is Jaffa Road. They just released their third studio album. I've been playing their work for, for, for a while here at KXP. The first since 2012's Juno Awarded nominated Where the Light Gets In. This is called Until When and it's an eight track uh, record that uh, combines um, North African, Arabic, Indian classical, funk, rock, electronic, and dub influences over a foundation of traditional Ashkenazi and Sephardic Jewish music, some of which is centuries old. We're going to be talking to Aaron Lightstone, who's the band leader, co-producer, oud player, guitarist, synthesizers, and vocals. Uh, we're going to be talking uh, to Tamar Ilana, who is the lead vocalist on the record. We're going to be talking to Sean Rompre, who's the percussionist, and it's going to be great to uh, have them here. But first, as always on Sama, the music, so you get to know what we're talking about. So enjoy this right now. This is Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. And if you, wherever you may be listening to us on YouTube, on Twitch, if you're checking us on Facebook, please follow, please subscribe, so we can continue to share this great music. Right now, Jaffa Road on Sama. Hi, uh, we are Jaffa Road. It is a pleasure to be invited by Sama. Uh, to play some music for you online. We're going to start with the title track from our new record. It's called Until When. It's a fusion of a, he a very well-known Hebrew religious song and an Arabic love song. And we call it Until When because the English uh, translation of the Hebrew says something like, Until when must I wait until the redemption? Until when? Thank you. 
Hello, Tamar. Hello, Sean. Hello, Aaron. What's going on in your world? Well, we I've been uh, we've been playing some music for you, and it's been a it's been a pleasure just getting this organized for the last two uh, couple days. Yeah. We haven't performed in the tr this particular uh, trio configuration before. So when uh, when you asked us to do it, I thought it was a great opportunity for us to try some, something new. And so when you say what what's going on, uh, well, th this has been occupying my mind for the last several days, just setting up the tech and figuring the out the arrangements, and you know, so that that's what's going on for me. And, but it's been a pleasure. It's been uh, it's been great. It's been great little uh, experiment uh, for us. Thank you for being here. Um, as always, this is a precursor for a possible live performance in one time or another. Obviously, yeah, we we've been so. going through a difficult time. I'm so tired of saying <laughs> that, but I'll say it again. We've been going through a difficult time, and uh, hopefully stages and venues and travel will be uh, more available so you can present this music, you know, to, to the world, um, of the world. And it's interesting, especially in the United States, you know, where we share a border with Canada, but it's hard. <laughs> it's really ridiculously hard. Like, even being so close <clears throat> to Vancouver, it's like you don't get much between the two countries and and it's really strange um most people don't even know what canadian music is and when i play music from toronto they're like wow this is really diverse it's like yeah toronto is a really diverse town um there's a lot of different populations that are living there and are creating some stuff if you guys can can share your your take on toronto first of all why toronto and what's it like there Okay, well, Anyone. who wants to take it? <laughs> who, uh, you want to go first, Tamar? Or I, I can... Claire, yeah, I'll go first. Go for it. So, I was, why Toronto? I mean, <clears throat> why not Toronto? But I, I personally, I was born in Toronto. Okay. Um, my parents are from Montreal and uh, Edmonton, two kind of opposite end cities of the, of the country. And my mom is Ashkenazi Jewish, ancestors from um, Northern Europe. And then my dad's family is part Romanian, part Scottish, but then importantly, um, part indigenous from the prairies. And so to that side of the family, of course, has been here for, you know, thousands of years. So that's also why Toronto. And Toronto to me, besides being my home, uh, I've lived in other places. I've lived in Spain and France and different places, but uh, I always seem to gravitate back towards Toronto for kind of the reasons that you've mentioned. Um, and I know it's like cliche and people say it a lot, but I actually really believe that it's true. It's really one of the most multicultural places in the world that I've encountered. Um, and it really has like superstar musicians from all over the world just coming and living here. And we have the opportunity to work and collaborate and create the sound and kind of always try and answer that question that you're asking, like, what is the Canadian sound? What is the Toronto sound? And I kind of think like we're in the midst of still creating that. And it's really exciting to, to be a part of. Okay, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, agree with everything Tamar said. Uh, for me, my journey was a little bit, I started a little later in music. I was uh, starting in software engineering and uh, in the middle of being in that program, I kind of discovered my love for music and completely shifted my life around and ended up, you know, taking a few years to be able to get into a school and found uh, a place at Humber College in Toronto. So I came here just knowing it was a, a you know, hotbed of different music styles and amazing musicians and came here for school and just met, you know, so many people in this amazing community. And then I've, I've been here ever since. But it, yeah, it's just been an amazing journey of um, playing in so many different styles and meeting so many great musicians and just being inspired by the scene. So yeah, super happy to be in Toronto and um, hopefully, you know, going to see this scene open up and blossom again into what it, its potential really is, you know. Awesome. What about you, Aaron? What's your Toronto story? Uh, well, it's a long one. Um, it's it's definitely home on my on my mom's side. My grandfather was born uh, in Kensington Market. Uh, above. I just got to say that's rare. That's rare. Yeah. <laughs> That's rare. <laughs> downtown Toronto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kensington Market, Augusta <laughs> Avenue, above uh, his yeah. father, his father's bakery, Jewish bakery in uh, in Kensington Market. Uh, and on my father's yeah, side, like I can send you this Toronto. cool photo if you want to like overlay it. We the the family came uh, to Montreal on my father's father's side in 1901, and we have a 
family portrait of my great grandfather and his siblings and his parents and grandparents are all in this. My great grandfather's siblings, parents, and grandparents all in Montreal in 1901. And on my um, my other side that came more recent, uh, the other sides came more recently from Eastern, Eastern Europe. Um, and yeah, so Toronto has been, I feel pretty, feel pretty entrenched here and pretty, uh, lucky to, for the same, you know, to be here, to be born here, to be raised here for the same reasons that, uh, Tamar and Sean are talking about and to, you know, have the opportunity to meet and work with, uh, and befriend these amazing musicians who, uh, who are on the Jaffa Road journey with me and, and who are not the ones like Tamar's mentioning is like the city is just like chock full of incredible musicians from all over the world. So whether it's just going out to hear them play or talking about potential collaborations or doing collaborations, it's all just very uh, exciting. Awesome. Awesome. So I, 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 I wanted to start with this Toronto because it is a very diverse city and Canada, you know, has a few of those cities that are diverse, but other parts are not. You know, eight, they're cold, and there's just not. Obviously, there's an indigenous population that's very strong, that's creating work. But Toronto, Montreal, um, Vancouver tend to be cities with a, a pretty significant immigrant population, and that will create a interesting music. And you guys have, in your sound, have taken that in and are, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but kind of representing that. You know, you could, you, there's a hip hop scene, there's a rock scene, electronic scene. You could do that, and that's your version of Toronto. It's, you know, it could be the same anywhere, but you guys are looking deeper into this. You actually seem to be, you know, presenting, championing, elevating these voices that more often than not don't get, re don't really bubble up as much. I don't live there, so I don't know all the nuances, but here, immigrant voices tend to be, you know, whether they're, they're a little more submerged. And music is a really powerful way to kind of go, to have people go like, wow, I had no idea something so beautiful was right here. Is that some of the intention behind that? Or am I just um, making it up? I suppose it is. I don't know if it's the, the primary intention, because I think the, the, the aesthetic, for me anyway, the aesthetic muse is what comes first. Like, I've just been a fan of many different kinds of music from all over the world for almost as long as I can remember. For Tamar, I bet it's as lo longer than she can remember. But, but um, for me, I can remember like just starting to uh, uh, being into music as a young teenager, and starting to start. For me, it started with with African American blues. Like when I mm -hmm. first, when I was like 13 years old, and I heard Muddy Waters and Lightning Hopkins and. Uh, Robert Johnson and people like that, you know, I'm, that's, I think that, you know, fair to say that's music that's not of mm -hmm. my culture. And that really blew a door for me wide open because that, that sound of that music just knocked me out. And I, and I started, you know, learning it as best as I could. And that just, you know, just, that was like my gateway drug, you know, and it just was like mm -hmm. one thing, one thing led to another. And I kept finding other sounds and other and then you know then I spent a lot of time in Israel and I started to become exposed to uh uh Sephardic music and Mizrahi music and Arabic music and 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 then you know and then when when I first heard the sound of the oud it that really like knocked me out and started me down a path of I got to I got to really dig into this and 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 learn this instrument and uh coincidentally just the Toronto story a, a great fantastic uh, Moroccan singer and oud player just around that time this was like the late late 90s Aaron Ben Susan he had he had just moved to Toronto and just as I was really my interest in the oud was awakening he had he had moved to Toronto and just by sheer coincidence I was listening to a record that he made like nonstop and by sheer coincidence a mutual friend introduced us and invited me to a small party at his house and we started trading guitar lessons for oud lessons and that's what sort of nice. just launched me and that like that's a toronto story he was like a, he was new he was from morocco via new york uh he had just moved here from new york at the time and we're still friends and uh and he's a, if you're not familiar with his music check him out as incredible oud player and, and singer and so yeah it's just like that's it's for so anyway the answer to your question 
is for me, uh, the intention I think is, is there on some level, but it's not the primary intention. Like I don't write music, you know, for that. I don't think consciously so much for that purpose. It's just like, Mm -hmm. this is the aesthetic that I'm interested in. This is the aesthetic that I'm interested in exploring. And all the other musicians that I, that I work with in, in Jaffa road have like, you know, I think everyone has brings like different, uh, like proportions of the same interest. So maybe, maybe Tamara's not as into the blues as I am, but she's like steeped in Mediterranean folk music in a way that's much broader and, and deeper than I. So everyone has like these same interests, but different proportions. And I think that's what, uh, comes, to, brings it together in a, in a, in a unique way. Cause everybody's just filtering this lifetime of musical passion and interest and experience in so many different styles, you know, like, and Sundar is just like a quintessential, quintessential uh, jazz musician, for example. So, you know, he brings the, the jazz element when, when that's present, when you hear that in the music and, you know, just sort of spins around and in a very organic way, I think. All right. This next one is Yonati Zivi Fateh, an original song based on, Poetry by Rabbi Israel Najara from 15th century Safat.
sound like you're having fun when you're playing. It feels like so. there's, we, there's we a joy there. Uh, first <laughs> of all, I want to thank you for the four tracks we heard until when, um, the title track of the new record. Uh, Yonati, Adio, Querida, and Ben Adam. Uh, thank you for that. And obviously, we'll have a link to your band camp. Uh, so people can actually support you. Uh, Tamari, you, you come from a bit of, um, you've, you've been around music all your life. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but your mom is a ethnomusicologist that has dedicated her life to uh, studying and presenting Ashkenazi and Sephardic music. Um, what was that like growing up? Like, did you rebel? I always, I always think about this story. Like, I have two daughters, and of course, I, there was, you know, they're now teenagers, but there was like, you're going to do this and this and this, and they're like, mm, no. Now kind of coming back to it, but there was always like, I'm not like you. Um, what was your life like um, where you were just surrounded by that? Did you succumb? Is it like, I, I sound weird saying that, but it was like, I mean, I'm, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm a rebellious teenager that. mode right now. I get it. Hi to your teenagers. I feel your pain. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I mean, like, I kind of didn't have any choice when I was a kid. My mom was a single mom and I was like an only child. And we were in a lot of foreign countries all the time where maybe I didn't speak the language. And it's like, what are you going to do? Like, you're not really going to run away. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so uh, she would put me on stage and teach me songs and I would sing them on stage with her. And, you know, over the years, I sang more and more. When I was a kid, maybe I sang some choruses, like around, you know, four or five, I started singing on stage with her. Um, a lot of, at the time, like medieval stuff and Sephardic stuff and Moroccan Sephardic stuff, um, some French Canadian things um, and stuff, uh, and a whole album we did when I was eight. And, uh, you know, and then when I was like in my teens, I did a couple more albums with her. And then by then I was like almost singing 50-50 on stage with her by my like late teens, I guess. Um, but I did, you know, well, I had a lot of like interesting things along the way. Like, for example, I befriended or two kids in, in a small town in Spain befriended me at twins. And they were like, you know, why don't you stay with us when your mom goes off on her research trips and, and everything? And I was like, yeah. So I stayed with them in this small like mountain town, you know, in Spain. And I like really like starting at the age of like 11 or 12, I would stay with them for kind of weeks at a time and their family and I would really like live there and like I spoke that like I learned Spanish from them and like I learned a lot of like I was immersed in you would say now I was immersed in the culture I was just like living there at the time right but now it's like I was immersed in the culture and the language and really like that informed a lot of like who I am today I think and I've gone back and lived in Spain many 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 times but I mean did I rebel yeah for sure of course who doesn't rebel you know I had many ways of of doing that but in the end, on stage, I was always, uh, I always was aware that it was like on stage, the show must go on. So sometimes, you know, if I'm 100% honest, my mom and I might have been in like a fight or an argument like before, then we'd go on stage, perform, you know, no hint of anything, joke around, everything, go off stage and the argument would continue, you know, and <laughs> <No>. then <laughs> over the years, like... I really appreciated it eventually, but my rebellion, it might not sound like a rebellion, but my rebellion was to study biology at the University of Toronto and get a degree in science and like work in that area for a little while <laughs> and like have a normal life, nine to five car and everything. But in the end, uh, you know, I succumbed, as you said, or just kind of like <laughs> accepted like that really felt like a fake life to me. And I was like, my life is on stage and that's what I love. And I went back to it. Yeah, that's awesome. And that's here a we are. Story. <laughs> Thank you. It's also actually how we met. <laughs> How Tamara and I met originally yeah. was through totally. her singing on stage with her with her mother. She was a teenager at the time. I was playing. I was just starting out in the oud, and uh, they needed an oud player for uh, for one of those performances. And uh, and that yeah, that's how we that's how we met initially. And and Tamara, as a teenager, sang in the very very initial iteration of this. Uh, of this group that started uh, way back, way back then, under under a different name, but uh, a couple of what the was same. The name? It was called Shakshuka at that time. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I remember because it was my first vocal solo, and I was so scared, but I did I it. Anyway. Could do it. <laughs> That's so great. Fun. I'll never forget. <laughs> That's great. And tell me about Jaffa Road. I mean, the I'm name? familiar with it, but what's your what's your yeah the name and um, and Jaffa seems like a mystical place. I still haven't been to to Israel. I'm looking forward to it, but. Um, you know, you start off with one of my favorite breakfasts, and now you're talking about... Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's not just for yes. breakfast. Try for dinner sometime, too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know if you have that in the States, but there's like a... The egg marketing board here has an ad campaign. It's not, eggs are not just for breakfast. Um, 
the, those are the name Jaffa Road. So yeah, Jaffa or Yafo in Hebrew, Jaffa in English, is a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, it's a three thousand year old port city, and Jaffa Road is the the now it's the modern a modern highway, but it's you know the original path or r route from the port of Jaffa to to the old city of Jerusalem. And along the modern highway of Jaffa Road are many important uh, cultural institutions, and Jaffa has a, um, it's a very, very old city, obviously, 3,000 years old, and it has a reputation of uh, Jewish and Arab coexistence. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so all of these, all of these things put together seems like a very apropos name for what we're what we're trying to do. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. I love that. Um, the band is an interesting mix of cultures and styles. Is the band evolving? When I see stuff like this, it was just like, okay, so, you know, it's not like you're doing Beethoven, Brahms, and, you know, you kind of like have a structure. This is what I do. Or, um, or any kind of, you know, you're improv improvising, creating stuff. Toronto's changing. I just had this conversation because I'm an immigrant too. And my mom is confused in Boston by all of these Brazilian and Haitian refugees that are moving into our town. You know, she grew up, it was, we were Polish, our Polish, and they were Italian and Irish. So there's a whole new population that's coming in. The same with Toronto, there's a new population that's coming in. And the relationship you have with your, um, with your home and your new home, et cetera, and that's an interesting place. Like Tamara kind of like alluded to that a little bit. It's like... I am from here, but mm -hmm. I am in a place like Toronto. So you're having that sense of your identity in that city. And that, you know, that's a generational shift that happens also. You know, I have a completely different relationship with the United States than my mother has. But I'm curious is like with this band where you're, you know, you create, you you seem to be open and creating, you know, you had an, you, Aaron, you had this experience with the Oud where you're like, okay, something is going on here. Um, can we, can we explore? Um, are you looking at that or you're kind of, no, I'm just going to stick with this and see what happens. Oh, no, I think, I, I think it's, well, I think it's constantly evolving. So first of all, since, since the, since the last record, the band has evolved, uh, in terms of who the, the people that are the primary players. Um, so Aviva Chernik, uh, who sang with us for the first two records as a lead singer and as a guest artist on, uh, on the current record, um, uh, isn't isn't the lead singer right now we've got uh we've got tamar she's sing so she's singing we've added sean on all these wonderful electronic uh percussion and also since the last record um the other guys in the rhythm section so rakesh tiwari on acoustic percussion and justin gray on on bass and bass venus so right there personnel you got a uh, and and sundar is the constant My, myself and sundar are the constants mm -hmm. so Right there, you've got an evolution just by having different, a different set of musicians, for one okay. thing. Uh, but I think also, you know, for example, like I mentioned, um, I mentioned ben, uh, uh, the blues, like as being like a really important influence on, on me growing up, as an example. And I don't, I don't think that influence made its way uh, into the first two records that we made. Like, I just didn't quite see how it fits and then uh you know when i wrote the ben adam tune there was there was an intention there to sort of for, for me to sort of bring my that initial love of of blues music that really first propelled me down this path all those years ago into into this band and find a place for that so ben adam is like very explicitly uh, you know, blues influence, for example. So, you know, what I mean? so, so that's, I think, an evolution is it's, a, it's a circular evolution because going for me, it's going right back to where I started, but, but it's new for Jaffa road to have that influence. And I think, and certainly just by, by bringing Sean into the mix and having, uh, this real intention to put more of the electronic sounds front and center and, uh, and to be also just also with I think more explicitly with uh, just allowing the the rock music that we all grew up loving to filter in in a way that I don't think was as apparent on the first 
two records. Um, so yeah, I think it's evolving. I think we'll, we'll come up with something and then another evolution, I think for the, for the, for the next, uh, record as well. Okay. The next song we're going to play for you is a traditional song, uh, a romance, a love song about unrequited love from the Ladino tradition. It's called Adio Querida.
music is a funny thing like that where you can actually go back and rediscover something new. You know, there's it's not calcified. It's like oh, I know I didn't know how to do this, and it's also intriguing because you can find different things for yourself. Like you simply like you become a better singer, so you can actually tackle some of the stuff for a better player um, in that way. But I'm always intrigued by by artists that actually go and try to go like into these are the things that I loved, so now I feel like it's my time to do my interpretation of that. And if you if you weren't putting the rock in it before, what makes you want to put it in now? Was it you're like your chops got better, you feel like more confident, or was it more like this is where my energy is right now, I want to go explore that or something else? Yeah, I think it's the latter for me anyway. It's just like, oh, this is where this just it just feels more um right. I think maybe maybe for me anyway, like my journey my journey into like music of other cultures was was so um maybe so so consuming at one point that i like for mm -hmm. for maybe for several years i actually like stopped listening to the music that i the like the kind of rock music that i grew up listening to but in in more recent years i've kind of like rediscovered the like you know the genius of uh of late beatles music and pink floyd mm -hmm. particularly you know so it's just like oh let's let's see what like experimental kind of rock uh, elements like that we could we can we can bring in and uh you know and justin i think sean you too like are like huge radiohead fans and uh mm -hmm. i never got really deep into radiohead but i really kind of appreciate what's what's going on in that kind of music and just so like the intention to bring some of those kind of elements forward and not well, yeah and radiohead and pink floyd are two good examples of bands that really kind of combine two of the elements we're bringing to Jaffa Road or, you know, that you've kind of chosen to move in a certain direction with the electronic synthetic textures. Um, you know, Pink Floyd was kind of one of those early bands who started incorporating synthesizers and really like sonic textures into their long form pieces. And, and then of course, Radiohead kind of was famous for moving from a kind of pop rock band into a kind of uh, synth like a new a new style with Kid A and uh, Amnesiac that was kind of a, a big shift. So yeah, it's it's uh, it's exciting to bring those elements into this band, and I mean it's great to have a band leader like Aaron who's super um, into exploring lots of different options and sonic textures. Cool, cool. That's fun. It's also interesting to look at it from a perspective that a band like Radiohead and Pink Floyd, obviously, they're international bands. You know, there are people that play oud in various cultures that sing in different languages also got turned on to Radiohead because we live in that kind of world right now. So this this journey from there, like you could find somebody whose grandfather was a, you know, indigenous farmer in the Amazon who now knows more about Radiohead than you do. You know, it's For not sure. that same story. <laughs> it's like very, very different, diverse um, perspectives on this. and. And anybody, you know, I'm in this space, I'm dealing with a lot of people that have like this like trauma rigidity where like it must be this. And if it's not this, there's it's not it's there's something wrong with it. And you know, you try to have these conversations, like you the you don't really understand that these people are evolving in a way that is completely different than the way you evolve. Well yeah, they have and their perspective on this stuff is intriguing and um, these labels are really kind of pointless right now but right because we all have youtube those amazonian yeah. farmer children have you know like we we everybody's got youtube like, so <laughs> i, I interviewed an artist um <laughs> kumbila sami in uh, uh their palenque band in uh, uh san basilico the palenque they're a indigenous uh band in southern colombia their kids know more about their smartphones than I do or my kids do right now. And their parents were indigenous people living in the jungle. And it's just completely, you know, what their access to, the music that they're making, what they're hearing, their interpretation, their ability to, I'm going to take this traditional instrument and then I'm going to take this preset on this cracked version of live that I've got and I'm going to create something that will blow everybody's mind. So... You know, A, I champion you guys. You're from Toronto. This is awesome that you continue to tell the story. And B, you're not stuck, which is lovely to hear because sometimes you're dealing yeah. with stuck. No, no, we're trying to push things forward. We're trying to make 21st century yeah. folk music. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, perfect, perfect. 
Thank you for your time. This is great. Obviously, um, anytime you guys are on tour, we're going to find a way to help and support you. Uh, the new record is called Until um, Until When, Jaffa Road. Hopefully now they'll be touring. They've been here before. Yes, if you yeah. go to our, our Seattle listeners, they, they, they've been here before. They will be here again. Um, this is great sound, great music. I want to thank Tamar. I want to thank Sean. I want to thank Aaron. Thank you for being here. Once again, this is Sama, Seattle Circuit Music and Art. You guys want to add anything else? I don't want to just like run into it because I know that you've got, you got, you got babies to take care of. But <laughs> anything else we should know? Because, you know, it's not broadcast. It's like... Uh, we're, <laughs> well, going, just, we're, uh, we've got... Um, with the full band, um, you know, it was great. It was awesome to explore this uh, opportunity to play as a trio. But we're also... I just want to say we're really proud of the work that we've put out in the last uh, two years as a, as a full band with uh, the... In, in addition to the three musicians that are here, uh, Rakesh Tawari and Justin Gray and Sundar Viswanathan, and some guest artists as well, um, both on the album, but also there's a whole pile of uh, YouTube videos um, that we're really proud of. So we'd also encourage people to check check those out on the Jaffa Road uh, YouTube. Subscribe there. There's a bunch there, and there's a, several more coming down the pipe. So we'd hope uh, people just check out Check out the whole uh, the whole oeuvre. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. Six months, you got a crazy TikTok following. I could see it. You're like, you know, <laughs> ten second little pieces. Boom, 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 and there you go. I haven't uh, cracked don't laugh. Code it's yet. happening. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I yeah. just don't know how to do it. It is happening. Yeah. Well, it's happening. Only if you do it. Only if you do it with us. I mean, um, you do it with I will. Do it no, I'm so. like. Trust me, I've got teenage daughters. We're practicing dance moves, and um, <laughs> my nice. wardrobe is now being utilized uh, Love it. by everybody. It's fascinating. So, All right, we'll yeah, see you that's on the look you want. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Be well. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks yeah. so much for putting this together. We really appreciate it. And Thank you. Uh, we'll this see you in Seattle Seattle's sometime in the out. near future, we hope. Absolutely. Look forward to look, look forward to having Shushuka with you here. Yeah, it'd be awesome. For dinner. <laughs> Peace, love. Bye. All right. Thanks. Take care. All right. Once again, thank you so much to Derek and Sama for having us do this online special presentation. We are Jaffa Road, small configuration of Jaffa Road. Tamar Ilana on vocals. Sean Rompre on percussion, electronic percussion and synthesizers. And I am Aaron Lightstone on guitar, oud, and vocals. We're going to close out with an original song called Ben Adam, which is by, the lyrics are by an ancient, unknown, anonymous Hebrew poet, uh, original music by us. The lyrics say, Ben Adam, Malacha Nerdam, Kum Kera Betachanunim. Mortal being, wake up from your slumber. Now is not the time to sleep. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh.
לך, תרוץ לך, לאדון האדונים. וחצי טהר באף אחר, מטרם ימים פונים. 